This is your digital marketing toolkit. Hi, and welcome back to your digital marketing toolkit, the show that brings the experts to you with practical tips and tools to help you grow your business online. I'm Ben Amos for Engage Video Marketing, and we're here in the VlogPod studio today for episode three in our series on personal branding with Lisa Harrison from Social Media Mastery. Thanks for coming back again, Lisa. My pleasure, Ben. If you haven't seen the last two episodes, I suggest you do that before you launch into this episode. So in episode one, we looked at what is a personal brand and why you should be building a personal brand online. Episode two, we looked at how to start building that personal brand online and Lisa gave some really practical tips to just get started. And in today's episode, we're going to break down Lisa's top four tips for how to actually build a strong personal brand to take it to the next level. So, you ready to get into it? Sure am. Let's do tip number one. So, I recommend we go deep rather than wide. So, that means quality over quantity. So, it also means that you don't have to be everywhere. People understand that you can't be everywhere as a person. You know, big brands can because they pay people to do, to do that for them. Um, so, what you do do, think of quality. Um, choose two two sites that you uh, work with every day and potentially a third one where you look at maybe once a week. Um, and then work with those and make sure that you're keeping up to date with all the changes, the technology changes um, and the opportunities that might be available. I mean, what was it last week um, we saw Facebook stories being introduced and, you know, if you're an early adopter, it's a great opportunity to build a, a solid personal brand using these tools. So for most people building a personal brand for business, maybe focusing on say Facebook and Instagram? Sure. And LinkedIn or? Yeah, that's right. So uh, for me, I do. I um, focus on, on Facebook and Instagram as my two key channels. And then maybe once a week, I, I'd log into LinkedIn, um, see who's, who's asked to be connected with me, choose be careful with who you choose to be connected with. Um, you don't have to accept everybody's um, connection. And then, um, yeah, just follow through on, on anything, that, any opportunities that you might see when you jump on those channels, yep. What about Twitter? Who, sh who should maybe be focusing on Twitter? Oh, Twitter's great for journalists, but it's, all, it's good for everyone for events, so trade shows, um, uh, festivals, anything like that. Uh, it's all built around hashtags, so if there's a hashtag being presented at an, an event, yeah, jump on and see who else is at that event. Um, who else uses Twitter? Um, it's good for, if you are blogging, it's, it should be um, a, a part of your social media strategy as well. But maybe not a core focus for, for quite a few yeah, 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 that's the good thing about Twitter. You can jump on and jump off and it doesn't really um, affect anything. I think if you are going to use Twitter though, uh, you have to be on it every 15, posting every 15 minutes to actually make it really effective. Okay, so <laughs> if I'm going to go deep, I'll maybe focusing on the one or two social platforms that really will have most impact for my personal brand. Yeah. Absolutely, and the people that you know that you want to be connected with who are potential um, leads or sales. All right, cool. So what's tip number two? All right, research your niche. Understand exactly how it works. Have a look who's in there. Look for the influencers. So the influencers are the people that not necessarily have the most people following them, but actually have a a lot of engagement. So uh, if we're talking Twitter, they would have lots of retweets potentially. Uh, Facebook, they would have lots of people sharing and making comments underneath their posts. Uh, those types of people, have a look at what they're doing. Uh, look at the the videos and the, the blogs and things that are being written in your niche um, and ch understand how you can um, contribute to that niche as well. And how do I find these influencers? How do I figure out who's making a noise in my particular niche? Yeah, good question. So there are tools now, lots of tools actually, around that identify influencers. Uh, the algorithms that they use uh, can be quite questionable. I'm actually in the process of doing a uh, research project exactly on influencers and social media. So um, I'm identifying them by an algorithm that I'm creating. Um, at that university. So, but you can start um, using something like Buzzsumo. 
um, where you just put in keywords and it'll come up with content as well as influencers in that audience, in that, sorry, in that niche. Okay, cool. So using whatever tool it is, BuzzSumo or, or just doing your research around hashtags, um, yep. you're identifying those influencers and, and trying to connect with them or, or what are we doing once yeah. we've got that research? Good question. So uh, a couple of things you can do once you've identified those influencers is obviously look at what they're doing um, and see how you can contribute. But the other thing would be try and actually privately connect with them. Try and have a, a conversation with them about your your projects or, or what you're trying to talk about and see if they can get on jump on board with you because then they may actually share your information to their audience. And if that happens then you've got opened up your whole world of networking online because you've if they've got a large audience then you're potentially seen as an expert because you've been recommended by an influencer. So it's all about relationships then, right? Absolutely. And you know, if you can sustain a relationship in person and online, they're going to be the more um, quality relationships that uh, will help build up your business. Cool. So that's two. Yeah. Tip number three. I recommend do what you're good at. Okay. Find, out what, um, find out what you like doing that's talking about, but also uh, when you're actually creating the content. So if you're not a good writer, don't start a blog. Um, start video, using video. Um, if you're a good photographer, you know, Instagram is perfect for something like that. So don't, you don't want to become, be doing something that's going, you're going to end up being miserable doing. You need to be able to sustain your personal brand um, because it's not going to go away. <laughs> That's really good advice and I think maybe if you're not sure what you're good at then maybe just trying different things and seeing what yeah. resonates with you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yep. And experiment. Yeah. I mean there's no right or wrong. Excellent. So tip number four. Find your uniqueness. I think if you can ask your friends and family what they think you rock at, that's a good starting point to find your uniqueness. Um, think about your interests, your passions, think about your uh, family and friends, and think about what really um, rocks your boat. Yeah, it's about being yourself. <laughs> being right? yourself, yeah. That's the personal part of personal brand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if you can be authentic and find those things, uh, it, it's just going to naturally grow and, and be a positive benefit to you. I think people get a bit scared of that, about putting themselves out there. Well, like, how do you think people can best get over that fear mm. of being personal within their brand? I always say to my students, it's about you using social media to empower you and what you need and want. Um, and then, and it's not about you uh, being driven by social media. So if you can understand your aims and objectives and why you're actually on social media in the first place, then you'll be able to say, look, I'm choosing not to share that information and I'm choosing not to connect with that person because that's not going to achieve my aims and objectives or my goals, my personal goals. Well, thanks very much, Lisa. Those four tips are gonna be really valuable for everyone. And, and just to remind you guys, those four tips were going deep rather than wide um, with your social channels. So picking one or two channels that you're really gonna focus on and, and achieve results with. Number two is all about researching your niche. It was all about finding those influencers and figuring out what they're doing and maybe connecting with them as well to help grow your personal brand. Number three, we were talking all about not doing what you're not good at. You need to enjoy growing your personal brand to really achieve results here. And number four was all about being unique, finding what's personal about your personal brand and being yourself. So hopefully those tips are gonna give you guys some really valuable ways to start growing a strong and powerful personal brand. But we're gonna come back in the next episode to wrap things up for this personal branding series and we're gonna ask Lisa to share with us how we can apply this personal brand to actually equal some results in our business. How's that personal brand going to grow our business and take the business to the next level? So make sure to tune in for the next episode. You won't want to miss that one. And in the meantime, use the hashtag DM Toolkit with any questions or comments you have about any of these personal branding issues or anything to do with Digital Marketing Toolkit. We really look forward to connecting with you guys on that. You can also head over to vlogpod.com.au slash DMT for all the resources for this episode. And until next time, I'm Ben Amos from Engage Video Marketing and we'll see you then. This is your Digital Marketing Toolkit.